This is one of the, unfortunately, the drawbacks of having a front loader or loader. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So hopefully behind me you can see we've got this new Marshall feed trailer here and it's what we're gonna to use to feed the cattle on the farm. You put the silage bales in the middle and then the cattle can feed from the side. So there's Andy from Marshall there just packing up. He's just dropped it off with the crane on the low loader there. And we'll just take this around to the back of the farm now. Hopefully it's gonna come in really handy uh, for feeding the cattle over the rest of the duration that they're in and also when they go out we can feed some straw in here or you can feed silage as well so it's going to be really really handy so elsewhere on the farm i've been cleaning off this nine acres field and it's going to go into potatoes this year and on the field we had the cattle here uh, outside over the winter and i've been clearing up this morning the muck and i put it into the western trailer the richard western uh, slight issue though being the having the loader tractor has meant that i had to dis disconnect the trailer and the trailer's now decided to bury itself in the soil and i just put the forks underneath the trailer with the front loader there and it couldn't lift the uh, the nose up just to get the, the the hitch out of the ground so it's a bit of a problem i'm going to i'm going to go back to the workshop probably get the canam and uh, just get this uh, a jack underneath here to try and jack it up and i'll have to get a block of wood as well underneath the jack so that it doesn't sink in too much but this is one of the unfortunately the drawbacks of having a front loader or loader um, on your tractor front a loader tractor is um you do get these problems they they can't lift the same amount as a tally hander um if i had a, a jcb here or a manator or something you would easily be able to pull this out of the ground because i've done it before um but unfortunately this is just one of the drawbacks of these situations so i'm gonna go and find a jack and try and deal with this issue i've managed to jack up underneath here i put a tractor weight on there and then my uh, dunlop jack and i'm just going to start digging out the eye of the trailer okay hopefully i can hook onto this now and we're finally there after about an hour of messing around oh hang on just back up oh come on baby oh so close yes we're locked. What a fuffle that was. Finally uh, managed to get it on as you guys hopefully can see. Uh, oh, just knock that off. Anyway, can now take this back to the farm and start making a muck pile, a new muck pile to go and put this, uh, this muck on here. And, and Greenvale can start cultivating this field, start ridging it ready for potatoes, which are gonna be planted in it. Okay, so with the trailer sorted out of the farm, I've now started to make a muck pile back on the stack yard. So I've just come up here to the field, which is called Letterbox Field. And this field was ploughed on uh, Wednesday. Today it's Saturday. And if we just have a look here, this was an ex-carrot field. So this is where the carrots were earlier in the year. And hopefully if you guys have a look down below, it's still a little bit wet on this field, but it has started to dry out. And what I'm gonna do with the John Dean here, I've got it on the Pottinger, I'm gonna cultivate some of these headlands here where if you just have a look down below, it's a little bit cloddy, a little bit heavier uh, in places. And I'm just gonna level them out with the synchro and then it will begin to dry out. And then Jeffrey at the contractor will turn up tomorrow uh, to drill all of this field with spring barley. So that's what this field's going into. What I've done uh, last week, I took the wings off, the wings bolt into here. And now the cultivator actually goes in quite nice and deeply. You see, I've just got a bit of string on here. I've got to remove before I go cultivating. And then the material which has been cultivated will then be chopped up by the discs in the middle. And then I've got the packer on the back and I've set the pressure on the packer to its lowest setting. So there's not a lot of pressure on there because I don't need the pressure because it's quite a light farm and you don't really need to break the clods down too much. Um, although having said that, we'll, we'll find out with this field. It might be a bit more uh, of an issue to, to break down some clods. up out of the way unfortunately the cab's quite dirty at the moment because the John Deere's been working every day with the livestock and the front loader so she's she's turned into quite the workhorse it's going to set my height on the wheel and the command arm 
I'm not going to use the GPS, so you can just have it on the main screen. And I can set my height of the cultivator using this button here. So if I just press set, we're all set now, rear, ditch, rear de hitch depth set. And I'm going to put it in a little bit lower than that, so I'm going to scroll it down. I'm going to set it about, well that should be okay, so I'm now going to set my speed. And I'm just going to increase my speed now on this flatter area to approximately 5 kilometers an hour. And you can just see we've got a bit of dust coming up there. The sun's been doing a great job this weekend of drying out this field. It was pretty wet after the carrots because Bartlett's used a huge cultivator which which made quite a, a soft soil structure and the water's just been sitting in this field for uh, the duration of the rest of the winter. So it's nice to finally get back out of the land and get working this field. Um, I thought it was going to be a bit more of an issue to, to plough because it's been so wet in this field but uh, in places you will, you will see quite a few carrots sticking out but most of them have been ploughed under. But yeah, just a lovely sight. You can't be cultivating on a lovely spring day like this with a potting synchro and a John Deere. It doesn't really get much better for me. And it's just a sign that summer's around the corner. I thought that this would be a good area to just show you guys. So this is where I've cultivated here. And you can just see, hopefully, that the cultivator's broken up the soil. It's made the structure a little bit looser there. You can just see that's much better now for drilling the spring barley with the Amazon drill. And on Sunday, the seed is going to be planted into this and it should be fine. And if we just look to the left here as well, this is an area here which was considerably wet on the field. Uh, but if you just have a look, I mean, this is what I mean. You, we're getting these cracked um, sort of lumps here from the compaction. And um, this is what I'm trying to do is, is to just break it up with the cultivator. Okay, so I finished cultivating the headlands of that field and the areas which needed doing. So Jeffrey's going to arrive tomorrow and that field will be drilled with spring barley. So elsewhere on the farm, this week I've had some wood delivered in, hopefully you can see behind me. Unfortunately the timber delivery driver, uh, he actually took out one of his U-bars on the lorry after the first load. So I've now got to wait until next week for the lorry to be fixed and they can deliver the rest of the loads which they were supposed to drop off. Um, but this is what we've got coming in. Hopefully you guys can just see it here. So what it is, is it's wood which is going to be chipped up uh, for my new business which is uh, renewable energy. So all of this wood here, like I said, chipped. We'll process it, we'll, we'll use some of the wood for wood chip in our boiler and then also as well we're going to sell wood chip from the farm to other farms and to other businesses who require wood chip for their biomass boilers. Uh, so, if you, if, so if you're watching this video and you've got a biomass boiler, um, I'm sure there's not many of you out there but um, if you're in the Norfolk or Suffolk area I can supply you with wood chip. Um, so I've got a, quite a few more loads to come in of this stuff here because what it's got to do before I can actually chip it is it's got to dry. So once it's dried it will take about, so it will normally take around six months to a year to dry. So this is a new storage area here which I've uh, tried to level out using the John Deere and the, the buck rate and all, all of this is going to be dedicated for wood storage and um, they put down underneath, hopefully you guys can just pick it up, uh, they put down what they call beams which are underneath uh, the, the stored wood and the beams will allow the wood to just raise off the ground a bit and it will help to aerate the wood and also to keep it out of the wet and it will take around like I said around six months for this wood it's going to be six months uh, it's actually drier than what I thought it was going to be I've got a moisture testing uh, unit in my workshop which I've, I've started to use for measuring this and hopefully if you guys can see all of the wood is around 12 inches in diameter there's some stuff here which is 14 inches it's really really you've got to be really really aware uh, when you're chipping this sort of wood um, that you, you need to make sure that the wood is of the right size so that your wood chipper isn't too small so I haven't actually bought the wood chipper yet it's something I've still got to put on order it's a Heiser hack HM 8400k which I'm looking at and it's going to go behind the John Deere 6155R and then I'm going to load the wood chipper with a digger so I need to find a digger as well and the digger will have a grapple so if you guys have got any suggestions of uh, I probably probably want a five ton digger if you guys have got any suggestions of uh, what sort of make or model to go for for a five ton digger drop it in the comments down below uh, because I'd love to hear your thoughts on what sort of digger to go for um, so yeah it's, it's a new business it's a new uh, 
diversification side of the farm if you like but there's a lot of work involved in getting this new renewable energy business off the ground so it's going to take quite a long time to establish the business to establish enough customers um, because it, not only will I be chipping wood uh, for ourselves and producing wood chip but, but I will also as well be providing a service with the John Deere for chipping wood on other farms so if you've got any logs if you've got any trees on your farms which need chipping up um, if you want rid if you want them disposed of I can come and collect the wood if you need wood chipped for your own biomass boiler purposes uh, just drop me a message and I will come and sort that out for you um, so that's that's what's going on this week I steer I cleared up all of the bales here hopefully you can see behind me using the, the John Deere I've just stacked those straw bales there and also as well if we just pan around here hopefully you guys can see I have tidied or tried to tidy the yard up so I've got the cattle float trailer just over there in the distance the Richard Weston and I've made a temporary muck pile out of Heston's at the moment um, and then there is the sh sh fodder beat clamp just on the right as well so I've been trying to tidy up the farm get everywhere clean um, as a lot of you guys know with livestock uh, it's quite difficult to keep the farm in a tidy order in tidy condition um, because you've, you're always running around trying to feed animals uh, there's always baler time going everywhere silo trap blowing everywhere for example um, and everywhere just getting very very muddy and wet over the winter months um, so this is what's happening this is what's going on um, leave me a comment what sort of digger I should go for hopefully you've enjoyed this video today doing all sorts of different things over today and, and yesterday uh, if you enjoyed this video please do give it a thumbs up it would be hugely appreciated thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next one